So over the past six weeks or so playing my wizard with module 24, I've made a few changes here and there just to improve my damage. And I'll go over each of them in this video. We're going to go quickly through each of the sections. You can find the timestamps on the play bar below and let's jump straight in. So first of all, my stats. You can see this is just me standing still outside of combat. And this is when we are in combat. Now this is without being in a party and without everybody having their raptors. This is indeed a raptor build, which will give you 15% more power when in a party with everybody using this. And if we make it a general trend that everybody uses this, then there won't be any problem. Most endgame groups at this point do use it, as it's significantly more stats than any other singular companion gives. So we sh really should be taking advantage of it when we can. So with these stats in mind, you can see power 15% short. You will have like Mystic Aura, Runic Aura, and that'll get it up to the 90%. Accuracy, 65%. Combat Advantage, 90%. Crit Strike, pretty much 90%. And Crit Severity will go to 90% as well when you're in a party with regards to these Dragon Hide boots now we do have a variant of my build where you can go and you can switch to the dashing hat instead of running the accuracy if you're running under dark content so that's mtos and demogorgon additionally you could switch the boots over to the new boots from mtos and you would run these boots only in mtos but what you need to do to make up for the crit severity is switch your feature frigid winds over to critical burn and this is what I mean by a versatile build. You can easily just switch one or two gear pieces and still sustain your stats. Additionally, you can sacrifice this accuracy and switch it over to crit. And then with that in mind, you can switch your Black Dragon Ion Stone over to a bit more damage of the Neverwinter Knight. Personally, I prefer to be more stable with regards to how much crit I have so that it's a higher base crit chance than having that helmet, which is very hard to proc off, especially in AoE and even in single target. You struggle to maintain all of those stacks, especially when running like content which requires burst damage. So I haven't found it as useful as just running nice high crit chance at base, 82.3% plus another 7.5% from this. And you're pretty solid at 90% nearly all the entire time. And that seems for me to give a bit more damage. Now this build for many players will be just something to work towards. Many of you probably won't be able to run Master Temple Spider yet, so might not have these rings. There are many alternatives and I would recommend looking up my guides and so on, with DPS, maybe older builds, and what I suggested, let's say back in module 23, where you got Dragon Hunt gear and that was very easily obtained just through the Dragon Slayer campaign. So let's move to our powers. Now you can see I've changed over to directed flames instead of Ryan fire weaving. And that is because in an artifact calling group, directed flames dealing raw damage is a bit better than what happens to Ryan fire weaving where the debuff becomes very much diminished with all the other debuffs. Additionally, again, depending on what content you're running, depending on what setup, you can have frigid winds or critical burn. If we are to use the MTOS boots right here, then I do use Critical Burn to get that 90% crit severity. And likewise, if you want to use different boots, for example, the Primal boots from Chult with 3% AP gain for your AoE setup, then again, you want to have Critical Burn. So you might need like two different loadouts just to have the different feats and have the option to have either or. Now, if you are the only wizard in the run, I would highly recommend running Rave of the Feebleman on tab, and then you would run with that icy raise there instead of entangling force. Again, you'd switch back to what I had if you have multiple wizards and the other wizard is going to use Ray on tap. That will stay the same, chilling cloud all the way and the rest of the encounters are there. And single target, it's generally ice knife and we have the rest of the setup, as you see. Now, if you're running a boss fight, for example, the first boss within MTOS where you have a bunch of ads, you do not actually want to use ice knife on the boss. You will lose damage. You want to be using arcane singularity combined with glowing flames, combined with direct flames, combined with combustive action. This is what I switch to when running a boss fight with a bunch of ads. It gives you a ton 
of action point gain just by killing enemies now if you're running like a full aoe setup so just running against lots of ads what i generally do is i go and switch over to icy terrain here over fireball here and then we go conduit of ice here and we go chill strike here and then we also have our combustive action here that's what I just run with AoE. You're having Chill Strike on tab with the extra damage area boost there. It isn't the biggest area, so make sure they're kind of grouped up before using it. And your Icy Terrain, your Conduit of Ice on top of your Fireball. I have looked at Fanning the Flames, but the target tends to die too quickly for it to be really feasible. Yes, it can work if you're running particular content where you know there's always going to be like a tanky ad amongst all the ads and you can aim well. And otherwise, I've just found Chill Strike on tab just to be more reliable damage. And then, of course, in AOE, you're using Arcane Singularity as much as possible. And you can get that back then really quick with Combustive Action. Now, if you're really nimble fingered, what you can do is you can switch here this feature over to Frost Wave. Basically, we're switching from Combustive Action to Frost Wave just before you use your daily power and you'll basically you'll freeze everything by giving it six um, chill stacks and then you can proc shatter on them and that can be a significant damage boost but it does require you to quickly switch between them as as soon as you've cast your daily you want to switch back to combustive action and then when your daily kills enemies then you'll get a bunch of ap back you can like nearly get like 33 percent of your ap back after killing a bunch of ads but that's about it it's very simple and straightforward with regards to the powers and what you're switching this being again the aoe setup this being the single target uh, buff setup this being like the selfish single target damage setup and so let's move to our ability scores and our race you can see we're just running intelligence all the way charisma and a wood off a wood off basically giving us that 5% extra critical strike, which will help us cap that stat, along with like plus two to int and dexterity, which is ability scores. We can make use of both of those. Now for my gear, this is for MTOS, Master Temple of the Spider, where you want to be serious about your damage within there. Now for my headpiece, when you're running content that's not Underdark, because this gives 3.5% damage in Underdark, I switch to like the accuracy one. You can also switch over to the crit one right here, and then switch the companion, this one, over to the Neverwinter Knight. And it can just be better to either have the extra damage boost in MTOS or demo, or the extra accuracy in every other content. This headpiece comes from the Zen market, unfortunately. This one comes from Seals, and this one comes from Dragon Hunts. Then you have the armor piece, again from Dragon Hunts. The arms piece from Dragon Hunts. Again, you could switch some things up with your build gaining the let's say masterwork arms here with the 7500 crit severity you can fit those ratings otherwise we're running with the new legendary weapons stormforge ones which i just got today i did run actually the purple ones for a bit and otherwise there's the masterwork ones masterwork ones won't be going old anytime soon they're still really good for team support adding survivability to everybody but with the item level difference it's uh yeah it's very good to go with these if you just need raw damage. And then the boots we have, you can see the Dark Maidens one. That's from MTOS, North Dark Reaches campaign. And again, you only want to run those when you're running Master Temple of Spider. Or you can even go with the Primal ones for AoE, giving 3% uh, basic action points whenever you kill an enemy. Very good if you want to do that daily spam. And I would recommend it. It's just, yeah, you'll have to do the campaign jungles of chalt and you can buy those primal boots just here you just gotta get all the way the quests done up to the fane of the night serpent and again make sure you're switching to those dragon hide boots instead of those dark maidens one if you're not running mtos literally anything else and again if you don't need the action point gain boots and otherwise make sure you're also switching to frigid winds. So you might need an entirely different build for that, like I have right here. I mean, loadout, literally just to switch that feat because it's so annoying to have a 60,000 switch cost. Yeah, that's just frustrating. So like I have one loadout, which has those Emtos boots and the helmet, and the other one has the other two, just them two switched out and the feet.
Then we have the neck and waist and artifact set, which comes from Dragon Hunts. That just gives us our combat advantage stat. It's very good. You can look at Mythalar. It doesn't seem to do much damage. And otherwise, you can look at having the new Mythic Demogorgon set. I haven't tested it myself, and I will do in the near future. I have seen some builds doing pretty decent damage with the Demogorgon set. But overall, it's going to be very little difference. I will see again when I test it. But for now, I'm running with this. It just works and gives the right ability scores as well. We've got the two new rings from Master Temple of the Spider. They complete a set, which is nice. And they also give us some nice offensive stats there as well. Otherwise, we have the Corroded Shirt just from our Dragon Bow and Veil mini bosses. And then we have the Pants there from Dragon Hunts. Then with our enchantments, you can see the setup right here with these three artifacts, the Tentacle Rod, the Assassin's Dice, and then the Red Dragon's Mark with the Dragon Bow and Blades as like our primary. You can also use Tentacle as primary and you can also use Assassin's Dice as primary. All three pretty decent debuffs. Then we go to companions and you can see my setup. For single target, we have the pseudo dragon. It performs very solidly in all bosses in Master Temple Spider and in Demogorgon. And for AOE, you want to have something like, generally it's the sucker boss or the inky boss at this point. Nothing competes with it, resummoning it between those fights and it then just doing massive damage. Yeah, there's nothing in competition with it. Yes, there are alternatives you can use like Wayward Wizard, Mystic Gog, Shadokai Witch, Regis, etc. None are going to come close again to the Incubus or the Succubus. I don't have it. Not such a big deal in MTOS or Demo Organ, And so I'm not too fussed about it. Companion gear, you can see what we're running with there. And then you can see all the companion equip bonuses here we have. We have Precision there, Crit Strike, Minsk with the bigger they are, Black Dragon Iron Stone for the crit, the Raptor, that's the tamed Velociraptor giving us the power. Again, you want to be in a party where everybody's using this and that's like a nearly 19% power buff. And that's why you can see right now my power is a bit low. We need another like 14% there. So that's running a party with everybody else also giving us the power and we all share it and gain pretty nuts amount of stats for just one companion. And then it's the Batiri and then it's the Alchemist. And again, alternatively, you can switch the Black Dragon Isle Stone over to the Knight for a bit more damage instead of crit. And you could switch the Helmet over to the Serene Hood for a bit more crit from there. It's just not very reliable and I personally like to have a high crit rate it also allows you to have better burst damage and also better damage in AOE right from the start without having to like get so many stacks here you're all you're nearly going to do is proc precision and then you'll have your 90% crit chance which is the max and otherwise if you're going for like full AOE fights make sure you switch the Batiri out to something that like the one from Jarlaxle which gives Maestro's Observation, which just gives you accuracy, as you're not going to gain any benefit from the Batiri when you're yeah, not fighting bosses. And that's it for Companions. We move to Mounts. Here in the current tab, we have our Golden Touch for single target. And for AoE, I'm still not sure. There's like the Vortex from the Carpet and from the Dark Omen Horse. There's the Pegasus. I personally generally run with the Pegasus most of the time. It's a nice buff for everybody and it deals a decent amount of damage for an AoE combat power. There's no real best at the moment. There's also like the wings and so on. But again, definitely for single target, it's the golden touch in pretty much any fight. And then we have opportunistic here for combat advantage. And in the stable, you can see we have that set up there. Two warlords for our companion and artificer's persuasion for artifact calls. Assassin's Covenant, two of those. And you can see the insignia as we're running there. Just, yeah, all 15 of those. And the collars themselves, the only real one that matters is encounter power damage and our crit severity. That is it. Boons themselves. You can see I'm still very behind on boons. You want to just be getting all these offensive ones. You want to be getting the movement speed. And then you want to be getting on tier 5. You want to be getting that Forte one right here. And you want to be getting generally the recharge speed one. Unless you're stacking some yeah, mad AP gain build, then go with that one. And otherwise, bloodlust on the top tier. If you have some spare boon points, throw them in the damage and damage resistance against the enemy types. That will help depending on what content you're running. And then just all into the defensive um, yeah, points there. And then like lastly, hit points. And 
that's it really guild boons you can see what we're running there and that's my build pretty much the buffs that i am using is right here the flask of potency the squash soup the wild storm elixir the ratatouille from the guild food and that gives us the stats we have right here out of combat again we get 7.5 percent combat advantage from this armor piece here we get 7.5 percent combat advantage from the set just here that gives us 15 percent that gives us 90 percent combat advantage crit strike we get another 7.5 percent from precision just here that puts us at pretty much 90 percent and power will get that up to 90 percent when we're in a group with a raptor if you aren't in a group with a raptor well go and pester them until they are a group with a raptor <laughs> otherwise switch to like the deep crow or alpha compi or something like that which will just give you an extra 3.8 percent power alternatively you can make some adjustments here and there getting some more power ratings getting some arms with some power as well instead of these like you can get the dragon hunt ones which give you five percent power when like a teammate's 30 feet or further away from you you may note that yeah in my belt items right here we do have like a potion you can run a stone of health there as well i generally do when content's a bit tougher we've got the dragon fire nothing competes with it it's both good at aoe and single target especially on bosses and so we just run that all the time and i just have a placeholder which is a bell right now this one's utterly pretty much useless with recharge speed better off having bonus damage one for your companion but what i really want to have in here is the one from the north dark reaches which is going to be this one right here the spider totem we'll get that and we'll get that upgraded and then i'll have that extra bit of combat advantage and damage against drow enemies alternatively you can go to Valenhas, that's the Descent of Avernus campaign, and you can get the Forger's box, and you can look at how to get that upgraded to max. It'll give you a little bit of power. It's just you lose the effect when you die, and so you can't really rely too much on it. And overall, that is my build update, and it performs pretty well. I've been catching up with my fellow DPSers, and the wizard itself is pretty powerful right now and a build will go a long way to giving you that potential. Otherwise, the rest is down to you and your skill and your timing. Now for your rotation, let's say we have an artifact call. What you wanna do is you wanna, of course, initially cast your artifact, then you wanna use your dragon fire, and then you just use a few chilling clouds, and then you go into your encounters. Your first middle three, then like your tab, and then your daily and mount all within 10 seconds of the duration that your artifact is active. And that is it. The rest is just using Chilling Cloud. And when your encounters are off cooldown, you go and you cast them. Now, if you're running, of course, the non-selfish where you're buffing, you run with the ray there and the icy rays. And then in that rotation, just make sure you're always doing like your ray first and then the rest of your encounters so that they're all buffed up with that 10 percent and that is it that's simple as that for the wizard special thank you to all of these channel members we'll see you guys around goodbye for now